Good afternoon. I'm Greg Hart, Chair of the Santa Barbara County Board of Supervisors. This press conference is broadcasting on County TV Channel 20 and the county's YouTube page. The meeting is being interpreted in American Sign Language by Kim Rich, and Carlos Saraceto is interpreting the press conference in Spanish. His interpretation will be available on the county's website and YouTube page shortly after we conclude the press conference. Halloween is here. For more than a month, we've been asking local residents to avoid door-to-door -door trick or treating and gatherings of any kind this year. I'm very hopeful that like Labor Day weekend, our community will rally to this moment and avoid spreading the COVID-19 virus through irresponsible behavior. There are many creative ways to have fun on Halloween without exposing yourself and family members to unknowingly contracting or spreading the virus. In Santa Maria, local kids can safely celebrate Halloween by visiting drive through trick-or-treat events hosted by Allen Con Hancock College, Pioneer Valley High School, and the Santa Maria Police Department. In Isla Vista, residents are enjoying live entertainment from home through Lucidity Festival's virtual Halloween event. In Goleta, many local families are participating in the Goleta Valley Library's pumpkin decorating contest and the staff of the Santa Barbara Independent is even celebrating Halloween on TikTok. Halloween is a great opportunity to remind everyone that COVID-19 can spread from individuals who are exhibiting no symptoms. You can feel perfectly fine and the virus can be shedding before you feel any symptoms at all. This weekend is the beginning of the holiday season that will quickly accelerate toward Thanksgiving, which is perhaps America's most traditional family gathering event. Canada also celebrates Thanksgiving, but the event occurs on the second Monday of October. Unfortunately, Canadian health officials are now seeing a significant spike in coronavirus cases that are linked to family gatherings held more than two weeks ago in Canada on their Thanksgiving. Infectious disease experts have noted that several elements associated with Thanksgiving, travel, students returning home from college and indoor gatherings could fuel the spread of the virus. In the United States, Thanksgiving is usually one of the busiest weekends for travel in the year. Given the current state of the pandemic, this is a particularly bad time to be planning to visit relatives. Yesterday, the United States set another pandemic record with more than 90,000 new COVID-19 cases reported in a single day. The new benchmark of 90,456 cases was hit Thursday just hours after the United States logged its 9 millionth coronavirus case and shattered the previous daily record of 80,662 infections set a day earlier. COVID-19 infections have actually been increasing across the United States at the fastest rate since the start of the pandemic. And overnight, more than 30 states reported having more than 1,000 new cases. The rest of the country is already experiencing a very significant new wave of the virus. Fortunately, California's numbers, while ticking up, have not yet spiked to the same degree. Whether that is because our state's cautious reopening plan or other factors remains to be seen. Santa Barbara County's most recent state report card shows we are firmly in the red tier. The positive cases this week in both Isla Vista and Santa Maria are pushing us further away from making it into the orange tier. We know that each of us has a crucial role to play in stopping the spread of the virus. The decisions we individually make about avoiding gatherings can be uncomfortable and the expectations of family members can be difficult to manage but the consequences of making the wrong decision could be fatal for someone you love. There are far too many painful examples in our country and around the world of family members infecting older loved ones and the tragic consequences that have followed. If you are invited to a gathering this weekend for Halloween or later in the holiday season, please resist the temptation to participate. If you're thinking about getting tested for COVID-19 as a precaution before traveling or gathering with family or friends, Remember that a COVID-19 test only represents a single moment in time. You can contract the virus the next day and not exhibit symptoms and think you are fine because you had a negative test, but you are actually infectious. There is no safe strategy to gather with people outside your immediate household this holiday season. This year is different from other years and we all need to do our part to stop the spread of the virus. Next holiday season, we will hopefully be in a very different place and can again resume our traditional celebrations with family and friends. Next, we have Nick Clay, Director of the Santa Barbara County Emergency Medical Services Department. 
Thank you, Supervisor Hart. Good afternoon. Uh, today, I'd like to talk. Would like to provide some additional information on data reporting and recent COVID activity in the Isla Vista community. When it comes to data reporting, we want to simply emphasize that the numbers we report on a daily basis are not representative of how the state evaluates our tier assessment or assignment. The state reviews and validates the average daily case numbers, testing volume, and test positivity rate for the week that occurred two weeks ago. This is an important point because as, public, as the Public Health Department reports numbers daily, the state is using numbers from two weeks ago to evaluate if we will remain in the current reopening tier or move forwards or backwards. So why, what does this difference between the state report and when the county report mean for us? Simply it means we need to remain vigilant as we move into the fall and winter. This is the season where we tend to gather with family and friends. However, as we've said before, this year is different. We need to find new ways to be safe and to celebrate. Next, I'd like to go over some specifics regarding the recent COVID activity in the Isla Vista community. In general, when Isla Vista is discussed, the typical inference is that the community is made up of college students. We want to start by saying we have worked closely with UCSB and they have been a willing partner in the effort to curb the spread of COVID-19 amongst our student population. As of today, the Public Health Department has reported a total of 397 cases in the Isla Vista community out of a total of 9,944 cases in Santa Barbara County. In other words, Isla Vista accounts for 4% of all cases that have occurred in Santa Barbara County. Of the total cases in Isla Vista, 26 are currently active and still infectious, and 370 have recovered. This recent rise in cases has put Isla Vista at the top of the list with the highest seven-day sum of cases in the county for the first time since this pandemic began. This is significant given their population is significantly lower than other communities who have previously been at the top of the list. Several weeks ago, as cases began to rise in Isla Vista, the Public Health Department partnered with UCSB to prepare for this potential surge in cases amongst the UCSB community. This partnership has resulted in the implementation of additional measures to identify and mitigate the spread of COVID-19 in the Isla Vista community. The Public Health Department has set up a testing site in the Isla Vista community free to all residents. UCSB Student Health has ramped up testing, contact tracing, isolation and quarantine efforts, um, and UCSB has been conducting surveillance testing and has been actively testing their staff. Some challenges have recently occurred with the test result reporting over the past month. There are several reasons UCSB and the Public Health Department might get notified about new cases at different times. UCSB may not be notified before the Public Health Department if a student or employee verbally confirms their results before the Public Health Department receives the official copy. In instances where UCSB is the provider who ordered the test, UCSB might not be notified of a new case before the department. This is because there can be minor delays of cases being received through the state's reporting system. If a provider other than UCSB orders a test, the Public Health Department might actually find out first before UCSB. Another complication with the test results is that some staff and students have, addre have addresses outside of the county. The Public Health Department only receives information automatically about cases assigned to our jurisdiction or county. It can take some time to get an out-of-county case assigned to our jurisdiction. Consequently, some cases are delayed in reporting to the Public Health Department. And this accounts for that two-week lag and seven-day average. While all of this remains a current point of focus, it is important to remember that they are a part of our county and we will only succeed in our efforts to curb the spread of COVID-19 as a whole community. We must continue to step back and gain perspective of the totality of cases in the county. Our case rate is a collective rate for all regions within the county. In spite of the increase in Isla Vista's seven-day sum of cases on October 16th, the county's case rate has remained steady since October 8th with an average of about 5.2 cases per 100,000 people. What happens next in Isla Vista is truly up to its residents. No matter how much we test, how much public education we send out, or how much a health officer order is enforced, the individuals in that community need to take the appropriate actions to stop the spread of COVID-19. That means stop having parties, wear a mask, and don't just practice social distancing or physical distancing, do it. Lastly, I wanna acknowledge the work of our community members, business, businesses, government partners, and especially that of the public health department staff. So many of you have adapted to the changes as we move in within the state's tiers. It's important to remember that moving from purple to red or red to orange and so forth are certainly positive steps, but it does not mean that the risk or threat is over. Much like when a category four hurricane gets downgraded to a category one, 
it's still a hurricane. It's still a dangerous situation. And much like the community still prepare, they still prepare for lesser grade storms. We must remain vigilant and weather this particular storm. And from all of us at Public Health in the County, we want to wish you a safe and fun Halloween. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clay. Susan, Grant, Suzanne Grimacy is also here with us today from the county's Department of Behavior and Wellness. Thank you, Supervisor Hart, and good afternoon. There are plenty of reasons that make feeling anxious pretty normal right now. Living life in a pandemic has changed our lives and our routines in every way imaginable. And I don't need to convince anyone that this is truly a year like no other. And the addition of the stress surrounding the presidential election and the state of our nation can now be added to our list. For many, they're feeling the accumulation of stressors, and this has the ability to take both a physical and an emotional toll. Earlier this year, the American, I'm sorry, yeah, the American Psychological Association conducted a Stress in America survey, and they found that more than half of the participants, 56%, responded to identifying that the 2020 election is a significant stressor in their life. In the end of June, the Centers for Disease Control reported that the highest rising levels of anxiety were among young adults, as well as people of color of all ages. The prevalence of anxiety symptoms, says the CDC, among all populations were three times higher than the corresponding period in 2020. On a positive side, there are some things that we can start doing right now to improve our mental health in general, but also surrounding the pending election. I would like to share eight things that I think fall on the most important list. The first is to stay informed with reliable information and to take a break from incoming information when you need to. The second is to stay socially connected. Connect with supportive family and friends. Look for productive opportunities to have conversations with others, even though you may have varying viewpoints. The third, set boundaries, both in conversations and with your time. The fourth, break the habit of ruminating on bad outcomes or worst case scenarios. Uncertainty is everywhere right now, and one is the lead drivers Uncertainty is a lead driver of stress. Next, have an election day plan. It's gonna be a day where a lot of people's minds will be consumed with wonders of the outcomes. Plan something that will take your mind off that will distract you throughout the day. Next, focus on what you can control. There are so many things right now that we can't control. Focus on the things that you can. Next, engage in meaningful activities. And lastly, but not least important, stay physically active, get out, move your bodies. The Department of Behavioral Wellness and the Community Wellness Team are offering some opportunities to connect and help to combat some of the stress surrounding this time of the election. The community can connect with a Community Wellness Team member before the election, during, after, any time by calling 805-364-2750. In addition, Behavioral Wellness and the Community Wellness Team will be hosting virtual listening and support spaces um, next Tuesday through Friday of next week on Zoom from 5.30 to 6.30 each night. Each of those offerings will have Spanish translation available as well. Information on these listening and support spaces, including the Zoom login information, as well as tips on stress management during the election, as well as other resources for community or organizations in facilitating dialogues during this time, are all available on the Behavioral Wellness website, which can be reached by going to countyofsb.org backslash behavioral wellness, you're gonna click on the community link and drop down to community disaster trauma response. Or you can call the community wellness team directly and we can help get you to that location. A reminder in closing that we are all in this together and we are all feeling the weight 
of the cumulative stressors in front of us right now. We are all feeling a bit weathered and perhaps feeling less patient with others and with ourselves. This is also a time to be diligent with our physical safety, but it's also a time to be diligent about treating others and ourselves with extra kindness and extra patience. Thank you very much and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, Ms. Grimsey. I apologize for the technical difficulties, but hopefully we have reestablished our connection with the media. And so if that is intact, we'll now answer questions on the phone. So far we have no hands raised. Okay. Oh, okay. They are hearing us, that's good. Great. First up will be Laura Place with Santa Maria Times. Laura, Hi. go ahead. Can you hear me? Go ahead, Laura. Oh, can you all hear me okay? We can. Okay, great, thanks. Um, I was wondering if you could give a little context as to um, why you think the equity metric um, increased so quickly in the past week. Um, it looked like it rose by like a whole percentage point. Um, was that mostly due to Isla Vista cases um, and specifically like in the um, in the neighborhood in Isla Vista that's lowest on the Healthy Places Index? Yeah, I think it's it's safe to assume because we need to look at the, the data more specifically, but um, since we did a focus testing and the Isla Vista testing uh, has been increased quite dramatically and it is one of the health equity um, areas that that would be a safe uh, connection to draw. Okay. Do you think some of it too could be due to cases in Santa Maria since 11 of those um, equity neighborhoods are in that city? Um, certainly possible. Without looking at the data, it's, it's hard to give you a specific answer. Okay. Um, I also don't know if, if um, you, Nick, would be able to answer this, um, but um, I was wondering about at-home testing for COVID. Um, I know a lot of teachers and school districts now are getting contracts with labs to do at-home, just like self-swabbing those testing. Um, is that something that's going to be available for just the everyday person? Um, is that something the county would have control over, like the distribution of those tests? What does that look like going forward? So public health doesn't have control of the distribution of the at-home testing, uh, but it is something that is available. There are a number of other new testing methods, such as saliva-based testing, that are also coming on the market. Um, all of those are available commercially or through a healthcare provider. And would you recommend those any more or less than, you know, a state-run test site that's just the nasal swab? done by a medical professional? No, as long as they're FDA approved or they have an emergency use authorization, I would say they're all, um, they're, not all of them are going to be equal. However, if they're run um, on a PCR or a, what we typically have been run with those protein-based tests, those are the golden standard. Anything less than that is may not be as accurate. However, um, I couldn't tell you if one was better than the other, but I could just tell you that the PCR-based testing is the golden standard that we use. Okay. Great. And then lastly, would you be able to give an update for um, COVID cases today? Um, I don't have the data in front of me, and I know that our website uh, data is delayed, and we did have a bit of a snag today. It should be up shortly, though. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Place. Next up is Tom Bolton with NewsHawk. Hi. Uh, this is a question for Nick. Um, obviously, there's been a, you know, a big surge of cases in Isla Vista. Um, sorry, um, uh, there's been a big surge of cases in Isla Vista, and when I'm looking at some of the reporting, like from the Daily Nexus, the student paper, there seems to be quite a bit of indifference among the student population, particularly about COVID. And I guess I'm wondering what you all think can turn the tide out there, because uh, as, as people move indoors more, and it, it just seems like that's become a real trouble spot. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say it's unique to Isla Vista community. I think that you've seen that uh, news reporting across the country is similar, um, similar challenges in, in that environment. You know, we're, we're doing everything I can, we can to, to help educate that community, help get um, peer to peer seems to be um, the best method for sharing the importance 
um, and risk associated with COVID-19. We've recently put up some signs um, about enforcement activities that could take place um, should we need to um, execute that option. And they'll be up there until um, we get this uh, curbed or at least get the spread down. Um, but it's really going to be, I think, peer-to-peer -peer focus. Um, and that community has to come together um, as a community and recognize that this is um, real. This is not going to go away. And um, their, their actions are the only thing that can prevent the spread of COVID-19 in that community. Yeah, and I just so what are you anticipating in terms of, of enforcement then? Well, Tom, I would just add that um, anecdotally, we did hear that there was less activity, there was less gatherings this last weekend than the previous weekend. So I think the coverage in the news media of the outbreak at the sororities and fraternities did have a positive effect on changing behavior from other students and residents of Isla Vista who are, I think, taking things more seriously. So we're hopeful, you know, Halloween's a big test. It traditionally has been a challenge in Isla Vista, but there's a lot of programming, alternative programming to encourage residents to um, stay inside with their household and participate in Halloween activities uh, virtually. And so this is gonna be a great test this weekend to know about the effectiveness of that. And we're optimistic and hopeful that that's gonna be very different and positive. Um, as we experience as a community, um, community-wide during Labor Day. So what sort of, but is, will there be additional enforcement, um, for example, this weekend because of Halloween or just going forward in Isla Vista? I think there is, a, there's gonna be a presence of sheriff's deputies in Isla Vista as there is every year. There has been a lot of contingency planning, um, encouraging people to, to do alternative um, festivities. And um, there's been a lot of positive response from the Isla Vista Community Services District, from other student organizations, um, community organizations supporting those efforts. And I think there's a lot of potential for success. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. And that concludes our question and answer. All right, thank you all for the questions. The Board of Supervisors does not have a scheduled meeting next Tuesday. Instead of a presentation to the board, the Public Health Department will send out a press release announcing the county's newest weekly state report card status on Tuesday afternoon. Our next press conference will be held a week from today on Friday, November 6th at 4.30 p.m. Please continue to practice these three simple personal steps every day. Number one, remember to wear a face covering and stay at least six feet apart from other people. Number two, wash your hands thoroughly and often. Don't touch your face and disinfect surfaces. And number three, if you feel sick, stay home. Don't go to work and isolate yourself. Call your doctor or clinic and follow their medical advice. Thank you for joining us today. Please be kind, considerate, and patient in your interactions with others. We are stronger together, safely apart.